The recent racism reports uh, coming out of our schools have reignited the transformation debate that says the country continues to commemorate Youth Month. Now, this issue requires all stakeholders to play a positive role in effecting change as well as schools to actually change their ethos. Let's chat now to Roy Gluckman. He's an attorney and director at Cohesion Collective to talk about how we actually handle this. Roy, good afternoon and thanks so much for your time. And I mean, if we have to go through all the incidents that we have uh, sort of been through or, or that have made uh, sort of uh, news recently, uh, you know, we would be here all day. But let's just talk about the most recent one. We're talking about the German International School in Cape Town where apparently a teacher told pupils black children do not have have role models because their fathers are, are in jail and their mothers are prostitutes. And then we also had, uh, also coming out of the Western Cape, where pupils recently uh, wanted to hold a gay pride parade. And we had other pupils who went to, who were outraged and harassed and held homophobic slurs. We had the hair issue coming up at the school in Irene. So we have to just look at what is happening in our schools. I mean, you'd have to imagine that, yes, this has always been there, but now we have those who are speaking up and who are actually putting it out there for the rest of the world to see. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I think it's it's become clear that, at least you know, for, for, for a lot of the learners, that our learning institutions have never been these apolitical, a-racial, agendered spaces. They are deeply political spaces mm. where issues that exist within our society, racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, xenophobia, they come mm. into our schools. Um, and I think what is happening is we're just seeing a shift in the consciousness around, and, and really kind of saying, not in my name, like enough is enough. We yeah. can't have another generation of learners coming through the school system having internalized their own badness given that we're not talking about race or people coming out racialized without you know even thinking or, or knowing that they have been racialized so schools i think have to be that almost that stake in the ground that we say we have to be dealing with the social issues that exist outside within mm -hmm. our spaces. And the thing is, I mean, you know, we, we, we would go to this point where we would say, but this is South Africa. This is 2021. We, we've been there. We know how this works out. We know that this is just not on. Why are we letting this happen? How is this happening? Because even where you have pupils who are doing this to one another, they are the next generation. They should have known better what's happening, what's happening at home and what's happening in between from home to the classroom and then in the classroom? Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing question. And I think that this is one of the big mistakes that we make is that I think a lot of school, actually all institutions, right, we kind of think that the institution before that institution did this work. Mm. So they're like, oh, you know, the kids learned about this at their family, in their families, you know, how to be good people, so we don't have to do it yet. Primary school doesn't think they need to do it, then high school doesn't need to do it, and then kind of no one's done that interruption. So I think that us thinking about, and, and also the conversations change, right? We're not necessarily always talking about very obvious racist words and actions. Sometimes the, a lot of the conversations that are happening now are much more subtle, right? The idea of psychological exclusion. We're seeing this in Cornwall and in, 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 in a lot of the other schools as well, where we have young black learners saying, I have had to work through my internalized beliefs of mm -hmm. shame that I am not enough because I exist in a school that has a standard that says, if you're white, then that is the mm -hmm. aspiration. And so, so that sense of racism, of systemic racism, which is often very invisible, that psychological mm -hmm. exclusion is also the conversation we're having. So, yes, we've been talking about this for 26 years, but that doesn't mean that it's gone away. So, so really, I think the conversation is how do we start having way more of these yeah. conversations in our schools that the schools actually take a proactive stance in saying our parents don't know how to have these conversations because mm. with respect they don't mm, mm. they just and don't uh, and that's very true i mean i wouldn't say it's everyone but uh, a, a lot of those conversations can't be taken back home but of course you go home and and these are young impressionable minds we're talking about as well so i suppose it's the adults in the room who have to take responsibility where do we where do we exact this change? Because, like you say, some schools are reluctant as well. Schools are are, are not ready to make that move. We, we're looking at you know some some teachers who come from the old school as well at school. So, how do we get this? How do we get this right? And and, and you know, it's it's a matter of urgency. We can't just say, oh, time will tell. We've got to give it time. We're out of time. Yeah, we are. I, I agree. And I think it's a bit of a, a, a multi-pronged approach, right? And unfortunately, schools have to take the lead. But schools, particularly private schools, or actually all schools in general, are kind of anxious to like reach into the family and say, hey, guys, maybe you should have these conversations. 
But at least for the work that we're trying to do is how do we invite the parents into the schools? Let that school be that space where we have these conversations and hopefully it filters in. So it's a multi-purpose, right? So in the homes, but definitely in the schools as well, we need to be mm-hmm. having these conversations. And I think the, the starting point, and it sounds like a really basic one, is schools need to start realizing that they are not these neutral spaces, mm-hmm. that all of this stuff is coming in. So kind of turning a blind eye and sometimes it feels almost aspirational mm-hmm. like they're like oh you know we're colorblind we don't see any color we're non-racial we're non-gendered and and that feels well-intentioned but it actually has the effect of erasing and keeping invisible power dynamics that mm-hmm. exist mm-hmm. and so we're kind of getting to a point where young learners who've been through the system are saying no we have to be talking about this so yes definitely the teachers need to be upskilled how do we hold the space how do we have this conversation why are we having this conversation schools as structures need to be saying what is it about our curriculum our policy our uniform our how we recruit our ethos that kind of entrenches beliefs of who we see as valuable and who we don't and then of course how do we start infusing Mm. diversity and inclusion, language, literacy, and awareness within our curriculums as well for the learners themselves. 